Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to my shop. Today, I'm going to be showing how I can turn this piece of wood into a bottle opener shaped like a baseball bat. Here are the tools I used. Uh, the main things on the left is a blank out of Spanish cedar. You can use any wood you want. Seven inches long, about one inch by one inch, or maybe just over. And the bottle opener was from Legacy Turning Company. I'm going to be using beeswax to turn and got all the other equipment as needed. First things first, I mark the center of both ends of the blank so that when I can turn it between centers, I have it perfectly lined up. I'm going to be turning a tenon to put this into my chuck. Got a spur bit on one side, live center on the other. Going to put it in and then kind of tap it in place. This is a soft wood, so it goes on relatively easily. And put it between centers nice and tight. And then again, at the end there, I'm just going to turn a small little tenon. Make sure I got the speed set right on my lathe as well. I want to make sure safety gear's on, speed set, and ready to turn that tenon. The tenon uh, for my jaws and my Nova chuck is going to be just about one inch. So I'm turning this tenon down to one inch, making sure I have enough of it that goes into the jaws to hold it well. There's the gauge. Need to be just a little bit more. All right, looks like we got it down to the one inch. Nice. Pop it out. Pop the spur out. I got a Nova chuck here. And I'm going to chuck the tenon now into it. Being careful not to press the face all the way up tight against the jaws because that uh, sometimes can cause a problem of it popping out. So I get it kind of close. But... Uh, now I'm just going to bring it down to round. Getting rid of all the flat spots, getting it perfectly round. All right, now that I've got it pretty much rounded off, I am going to be drilling the opening for the bottle opener. I get a drill that I have set up. This is an 11 30 seconds drill bit. And I put a blue piece of tape right there to make sure it was the depth of how deep the opener went in. Line it up, get it into my drill center on the bottom there. Drill to the proper depth. And pop it out. And now I'm going to hand thread on the opener. And I do this just to make sure that it's going to be able to grab in, it's going to thread itself in, make sure it's going to hold nice and tight. It's pretty tough pressing it in, so it's got to go all the way in. It's got a nice tight fit. I don't even think I need to glue these in place. Take a pencil here to mark where the outside edge of that metal is, because I want to make sure that the, the bat very bottom handle kind of matches up to that pretty close. Take it out. Bring the live center back up. And now I'm going to start shaping the bat. First thing I do is bring it right down to that line that I drew for the bat handle. That way I know how far to go down. Kind of clean the edge up a little bit there. And I'm going to bring it nice and smooth all the way down. Now to get the overall dimensions of the bat, I know that the uh, handle itself is going to be two and a half inches. Uh, the overall bat is six and a half. And the barrel, I mark at four because I want that to be about two and a half inches as well. Darkening in those lines. So I got a two and a half inch barrel, two and a half inch handle, and that small little transition piece in between the two where it's going to slant up. First thing I do here is cut the handle to the right depth. I know that I'm going to want to get that depth down to about a half of an inch. So bring up my gauge, set it a half inch, make sure I get it set to about half of an inch. Obviously, I go too thin, it's going to be weak, and it could break. Too thick, it doesn't look like a bat handle. So get that down to about a half of an inch. Uh, the main barrel of the bat up at the top, I'm going to actually want to be about an inch or maybe just under. It can be your personal preference when you're making the bat to see what you like. But I found an inch at the top worked out really well and a half inch for the handle. So you got to measure that and make sure you get that right amount. Nice, got that all set. 
that's going to be the transition part right here. I'm going to cut that down to get it to transition between the two so it's nice and smooth. There we go. Now that I'm getting the shape pretty close, I want to start to do the, the cutoff on the end. Because when I get the cutoff on the end, it'll really help. So right here, press in, kind of give me the end of the bat's shape. Also gives me the place where I'll be parting it off later. All right, I've got the uh, shape of the bat overall done. So now what I want to do is do some sanding. I'm going to pull out the way the uh, the rest there. I'm going to go through different grits of sandpaper. This very first one's about a 150 grit, just to kind of hit the high spots, make sure it all blends together nice, get around both ends, kind of get it a good feel. Once I feel that it's adequately smoothed, I want to put in the detail work, bring the rest back up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little pointy uh, carbide tool here, and I'm just going to put in little tiny cuts evenly spaced for the bat grip. Uh, I don't actually measure this. I kind of do it by eye, just slowly giving a small little indent into where I want them to be because I'm going to come back now with a piece of wire and uh, wood burn into these. Bring that piece of wire right over, hold it in place on the uh, actual wood to burn it. I turn this at a higher speed. As you can see, I've upped the increased speed. kind of gives the burning a little bit better. Now I gotta go over each one of those to burn it in. Kind of gives a nice detail to the bat grip. After I get them burned all in, bring the sandpaper back up just to clean up those edges to make sure it looks right. Oftentimes I'll hear right here, I'll kind of go back with the tool um, to make sure all those grooves are in right. And now I'm going to Bring the bat down so that it looks like the grip is actually a little bit over the bat's handle. And then, of course, I'm going to come back with many different grits of sandpaper to get this thing sanded down. 150, 220, 400. Got to make sure it looks nice and smooth. I blew off all the dust here to make sure it's good and clean because it's time to put on the finish. I'm using beeswax, uh, this product right here. Just putting it on with a thick paper towel. Now the first coat, I just get her spinning and I like to press it in there, get it kind of warm because it works its way down into the wood when it's warm as well when it's spinning. Getting extra detail, get it on the end of the bat, the end of the handle all over. I'm going to let that sit for 20 minutes, come back, do it again, do it again, until I get the proper sheen that I like. Once you get that finish done to the desired amount, it's time to take it out of the lathe. You could part it off while it was spinning, but I always like to use this Japanese saw to cut it free. That way something doesn't go flying on me. When you do that, of course, there's a little tiny nub that needs to be sanded at the top, so I grab a little bit of sandpaper, take it down. If it's real hardwood, you may need to use a machine. This is pretty soft, so it's easy to do by hand. Put a little bit of finish on there in there. When I get that finish on there, it'll kind of make it blend all nice, look good together. All right, looking good. Now, after we've got it all put on, time to screw the uh, bottle opener into the bottom. All right, when you're screwing that on, Mine here has a nice tight fit. I do not think I need to put any glue on it. If yours has a little bit of a loose part, feel free to put some glue on those threads. That'll hold it in nice and tight. Well, that's it. Your softball bat or baseball bat bottle opener. I made a whole bunch of them here. One for everybody on the team. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.